there all you future chargers. Welcome to the freshman orientation uh, for 2022. My name is Jim Short and I'm the principal here at Illini West and I am extremely excited to be talking with you right now. As you go through this video, hopefully you'll get a lot of information that you'll find handy over the next four years. You'll hear from different people like our awesome guidance counselor, Ryan Bliss. He'll talk to you about some career planning and different classes that we offer, course selection, things like that. You'll also hear from some of our amazing staff that we have, and they're here to promote their clubs and organizations. We want you to get in, in, involved in as many as you can. We're extremely excited that you're here. Can't wait to get to know you. Can't wait to work with you and see you grow from freshman to senior year. As you start your career here, uh, we want you to understand that there are certain expectations that we have for our students at Illini West. And I wanna briefly go through some of those with you uh, so we can start to lay that foundation for next year. The first is taking responsibility for your education. This truly is your education. It's not mine or anybody else's, it's yours. And you're gonna be given choices over the next four years on things like what classes to take or what pathway to take after high school, and that's your decision. We're going to be there to help and, and give support and give the resources and guide you along the way. But when it boils down to it, it's your decision to make because it's your education. Also, we want you to take responsibility for your actions. Everything that you do, every choice that you make has some sort of outcome. We want you to make decisions with positive outcomes. And when you make those choices, make those decisions, we want you to stand by them and take responsibility for them. Next, be prepared every day. Come to class ready to learn, um, have your materials, have your supplies, be on time, be attentive, and certainly talk with your teachers. Um, a big part of being prepared is attendance. We expect you to be on time and we certainly expect you to be in attendance. It's hard to be successful when you don't meet those two things. Lastly, we want all students to be positive. We want students to come every day with an enthusiasm to learn, ready to have fun, and most importantly, we want every student to be a positive influence on others. We promote our Charger code here, which is be responsible, be respectful, and be positive. Parents, a message for you. We encourage you to be an active participant in your child's education. We value your feedback. We value the communication that you give us when it comes to your child. Let's work together to make sure that your child becomes successful. We want your child to be just as successful as you do, and we believe that we can make that happen if we work together. Please be an active participant in that. We also encourage you to encourage your children uh, to get involved in as much as they possibly can, whether it be extracurriculars, clubs, organizations. Illini West has a lot to offer, and uh, we want students to be involved in as much as possible. We also ask that you ensure good attendance and good work habits. And lastly, all the expectations and the vision that we have here at Illini West, we ask that you reinforce that at home. Hi there, my name is Ryan Bliss. I'm the counselor at Illini West High School and I wanna welcome you to freshman orientation for the class of 2026. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share a, a PowerPoint with you to kind of go over some of the things that uh, um, looking ahead into this spring and into the fall, uh, some things to be aware of, just kind of um, make you, give you information on, on what to expect. Um, <clears throat> so you all should have a folder by this time. If you don't, you can pick them up from the office at, at your uh, junior high school. Um, I'm try I try to keep them as organized as possible and hoping that you can find all the items in here um, that you need. Uh, very informational, uh, a lot of good, good information here and uh, things to help you as you prepare for freshman year. Uh, just real quick on the, on the left side would be an agenda for the evening. Uh, myself, Mr. Short, Mr. Greenalls uh, will all have a presentation, a video, um, we also have the health department flyer um, in, in terms of requirements for immunizations and things to, for ninth grade because that's kind of a benchmark. Um, there are some immunizations and physical that have to take place prior to ninth grade getting ready for that, that year. Um, also a letter from Illini West on the requirement, these requirements on medical, physical, 
immunization, um, I believe an eye exam is also required. Uh, we also gave you a, a copy of the health form to take to the doctor so they can get that out of the way between now and then. Um, also have an informational uh, sheet on the driver's education program. Um, we do require driver's ed. Um, it's an Illinois, state of Illinois requirement um, for graduation. So it gives information on when the student would take that. You wouldn't all take it at the same time. It really depends on your birthday and, and when you turn 15 years of age and, and a permit, et cetera. That explains a lot there. Uh, next, we have some uh, an informational sheet on athletics and extracurriculars here, uh, followed by uh, coach info, contact information for all the particular sports that we have. We also have a Title I reading program um, flyer that talks about that program, um, testing in and out of that program and what it all entails, along with math placement as a freshman, uh, basically get placed into algebra one or one a and it explains the process on that and finally on the left side um, at the in the back would be um, a flyer on musical opportunities here at Illini West on the right side would be just this page of the table of contents um, the the second page is the most important page um, that that we have for tonight it, it's class registration form and that's what you would fill out um, your selections for your courses for next year that will be a green sheet in your folder and you would need to bring that with you uh, on the day that i come to your particular school uh, to register for classes so um, you will be aware of those dates hopefully those are communicated to you by your junior high school um, when to expect me and you would just bring that that sheet with you then the next page on the right would be the offerings for um, your freshman year, options in terms of classes that are available to you, both required and electives. Um, next would be the graduation requirements. We do require certain uh, classes to be taken and passed here at Illinois West, and that outlines those. Uh, next is a copy of an individual career plan. That becomes important as we do your four-year plan in the fall. Um, it's just a copy. You don't have to keep it around or anything. Just wanted to show you ahead of time. Next would be a list of all the classes at Illinois West um, year by year that are offered. And then the last page on the right side would be college interest requirements that you're looking at. Um, if you're either looking at a four-year college directly out of high school, um, uh, such as a state school or four-year private school, um, and then we also have uh, entrance requirements and recommendations for those going to a two-year or technical school, as well as um, high school diploma completion. So we will get into that as the uh, presentation moves along. So basically, uh, at Illini West, we, we consider um, three kind of three levels as our expectations. Um, the first idea or the first goal is to get you obviously to graduation. Um, there are certain classes that you need to take, a certain number of credits in order to complete your education in high school here, um, culminating in a graduation um, in the May, May of 2000, 2026 um, ceremony where you would be awarded a high school diploma. The other things that we talk about are uh, career direction. And we start that early on. I mean, I want you to start thinking about that now. Uh, I'll meet individually with you in the fall of your freshman year to talk about careers and, and some ideas, what you're thinking. Uh, we also use computer programs, some assessments to, to focus on that. And uh, how does that tie into what classes I choose during my four years at Illini West? And following that, supporting that are the post-secondary um, goals. So I know what my career is or what, what I want it to be. What kind of school do I need to go to? What kind of post-secondary, which means after high school, what kind of education do I need in order to get myself um, in line for that career? Um, are there certain colleges that offer my degrees in my career? And what are those entrance requirements to those colleges? Do I need to take any specific classes? Do I have to get a certain 
uh, level of grade point average or class rank and what do uh, they look for in test scores. So those kinds of, of things are our focus, kind of the long term and, um, you know, all the while meeting our requirements for graduation. So speaking of graduation requirements, Atlanta West graduation requirements. Um, so uh, all in all, we do require 24 total credits um, uh, to, in order to graduate from Atlanta West. And credit is earned by successfully completing um, a semester of a course. Um, so if I pass English one for the first semester, that is half a credit. If I pass, um, which means a D minus or higher, if I pass English one for the whole year, that's one full credit of, um, of English. So when we break it down, we need four years or four credits of English. Um, reading is, it varies from student to student because some students will proficiency out with the testing um, and some may be in it for one, two or three years. So that really just kind of depends um, and really goes towards the elective credits. Um, next is the, the math. We require three years of math. Um, you must take credits in algebra and geometry, three years of science, two years of social studies, which include a full year of U.S. history and a semester of government civics is required. Um, three and a half years of PE. We do have some different PE options, including a walking PE, um, your regular team sports uh, PE or weight training. We require one semester of health, usually taken in the freshman year, and one semester of driver's education, which is taken either freshman or sophomore year, depending on the age of the student. One semester of computer concepts, one semester of consumer education, and then one year of either foreign language, art, music, or a vocational. Vocational would be agriculture, um, business class, or our industrial tech um, program. And then the rounded off just electives enough to get you up to the 24 credits and we are awarding a diploma at that point. So credits and grade point average uh, I alluded to this earlier students are in credit by the semester and in all classes are worth the same amount of credit. Uh, the only exception is. Um, that we have a tutoring class, which is essentially a study hall, which is zero credits you do not earn credit for that. Later on, you'll have an op opportunity and you'll learn about tonight or today about the uh, CEO program. That's actually worth two credits for the entire year. But other than that, everything is worth half a credit per semester. Um, you need to retake any failed class that is a graduation requirement. So going back to English one, if you fail the first semester of English one, you'll need to retake that uh, until you pass it in order to, for graduation to happen. The cumulative grade point average, you always hear uh, a term the GPA, is figured at the end of each semester and it's only on the semester grade. So we do have quarters here. We have quarter one, quarter two that happened in the fall for the first semester. They combine and make a semester grade and then quarter three and four combine and make the semester grade. But the grade point average is only based off of the semester grades. Failure to pass required classes, um, you know, say you do not pass that English one first semester. Um, it means, you know, it could put you at jeopardy for not graduating on time, but it also could take the place of any um, elective that you are looking to take um, later on. So uh, passing and completing those credits is, is very important for graduation and taking uh, maybe electives that are more of interest to you. So we have students that um, do all kinds of different, uh, have all kinds of different plans for after high school. One of the groups are students who are going right to a four-year college or university. That's, um, you know, Western Illinois University, Monmouth College, University of Iowa, you know, schools like that. And those schools tend to have their own college entrance requirements just to be accepted and enroll in those schools. Um, they don't just look at, you know, does this student have a high school diploma? They want to make sure that you've taken the correct uh, courses in order to enroll 
at their school. So that's why it's important when we meet early on, if you have that goal of maybe a four-year college, that, that I know that so that we can plan accordingly. So typically a four-year college would require four years of English, which is fine because that's what we require to graduate anyway. Um, they also would like to see three years of math, algebra one, algebra two, and geometry um, are, are what they would like at minimum, but they strongly suggest a fourth year, which we do offer. Um, three years of science, and they need to be a lab science, such as the ones listed here, bio one or two, chemistry, physics, or anatomy are really good for those that go towards those credits. They also want three years of social studies. So if you remember back to our requirement, we require two years of social studies, but if you're go going to this four-year college or university, they're gonna wanna, want three years. So that's another thing to keep in mind, very important. Two years of foreign language, art, or music, um, some colleges tell you it has to be a foreign language. We do offer Spanish. Um, some will let you substitute art or music in for the foreign language. It gets real um, technical, but I just tell kids that are wanting to go to four year school, take two years of foreign language to be safe. Also going into that four year college, you need to have a minimal SAT score. Um, some schools, as you probably read in the news, are going away from that, but there are some that still that make that a requirement. So we do take SATs um, as juniors. That's a state requirement again. Um, so everybody will have a chance to take an SAT. Um, you can take it multiple times uh, signing up on your own, but you will have that opportunity your junior year. SAT is a, just a college entrance exam that tests math, reading, and, and writing. Um, there's also an ACT, is also recognized by four-year colleges and universities. Um, you also need to have a minimal grade point average. So not only do you need to take and pass the classes that are suggested, um, you need to do those with, with decent grades, usually in the B range, um, grade point average of, of 3.0 or higher on average, um, which means you need to rank, so among your peers in your class, you need to be in about top half of that, that class um, in order to be admitted. Now, you can get in with a lower grade point average if you have a higher ACT or SAT score. So just kind of those work hand in hand sometimes. All right, community college requirements. So if my plan is I'm gonna go to a two-year school and maybe transfer or maybe get the uh, a technical degree um, I might go to community college, such as Carl Sandburg or SCC or John Wood, uh, a school like that. Um, they require a high school diploma is kind of their minimum requirement. Um, however, if your plan is to transfer to a four year after the community college, it's important to try to take some of those four year college prep classes. Um, you will also need to take placement testing in math and English for most, most uh, community colleges. Uh, so that they can put you in the appropriate uh, level. And if you're below level, they'll put you in remedial classes, remedial classes, I'm sorry, uh, to get you your skills up to the level it needs to be. Um, there is what's called a transitional math and transitional English course. Those are being developed here in cooperation with Carl Sandburg College, saying if you take those uh, transitional math or English as seniors in high school, then you basically can bypass the remedial classes at a community college in Illinois, um, as opposed to you know taking that placement test. So I hope that makes sense. It's, it's still in the process. We're still in the process of developing those courses. We also have students that continue their careers and go into the military right out of high school. Um, we, you know, a handful a year, uh, each branch of the military does visit Illini West, um, some more than others. Um, we basically set them up, set them up in the front uh, during the lunchtime, and kids can kind of come by and visit their table, ask questions, and uh, learn more about their options there. Um, you will, during uh, registration, have an option to exclude your student from receiving uh, mailing or callings from the branches of the military. 
Um, we also offer the ASVAB exam here every November. And the ASVAB is a, a military entrance exam, kind of uh, categorizes uh, enlistees in different careers within their, their branch. We do offer the ASVAB every November uh, free of charge. So you have to be a junior or a senior in order to take that and sign up only. Um, the test, uh, like I said, we, we give that in November, but more information can be found in the guidance office. All right. Uh, like I mentioned before, all students in the 11th grade junior year must take the SAT. So we go by what's called college readiness. So in order to kind of get you ready for the, the SAT, we do have the reading program um, and you've already been tested um, on the computer at your school. You came down and took the PSAT eight with us. Um, and we, we look at those scores and if you um, score below some of those benchmarks that we have, um, the computerized test, the benchmark is a 1010. Um, and the, the paper pencil PSAT was a 390. If you score below those, um, you would you would be placed in a reading class your freshman year, at least the first semester. Um, you do get a chance to test out of it at the end of the first semester, um, but you can remain in it for the entire freshman year. And it's okay. It's shown to help us improve those SAT scores and get you the skills needed to kind of get, get up to that, up to par. So when you are a junior, you do well on the SAT uh, reading part. There is a handout on the reading and as well as the math that explain this more in detail. As far as the math goes, um, we look at the PSAT score and look for that score of 430. Um, if you're a 430 or above, you're in Algebra 1. Um, 430 or below 430, we look at the Algebra 1A class. So. Well, Algebra 1A freshman year and then 1B sophomore year would be basically it's Algebra 1 split over two years, kind of at a slower pace, but still gets you those, still, those Algebra 1 skills and a good foundation to move on and be ready again for the SAT. Pardon the interruption. ESSA is the uh, Every Student Succeeds Act. It is, um, it shows basically the state, um, kind of where our students are at by the time they graduate. And it is it is nice it because it takes more um, than test scores into account for our students. It takes, it takes the volunteering that a, a student might do, any certifications that they've earned through um, working, any ex, extracurricular involvement, you know, how involved are they, and any work experience. Um, they're taking all that into kind of looking at the whole person more as more than just the test score to see, you know, to determine success and determine um, readiness for the workforce and beyond. So um, it is it is nice that they're not just looking at the grades and test scores and evaluating students in schools. They are taking more of this into account. So uh, we do highlight that and the importance of being involved in all those things throughout their career in high school. So the four-year plan, again, um, there are some recommend, recommended four-year plans in your packet. Um, you will sit down with me in the fall of 22, and we'll, we'll come up with a four-year plan, just kind of see where you're at, what you're thinking about for after high school at this point. We'll, we'll put it all in a binder, and uh, we'll adjust yearly uh, as needed. Our schedule here at Alina West, we have a seven-period day. Uh, classes are 50 minutes long, and you've got a 40-minute lunch um, after period four. Uh, we've got a five-minute passing period that uh, you get class to class. Um, in terms of credits, you're able to earn six to seven credits per year, um, depending on the tutoring classes that you take. Uh, if you don't take any tutoring class, you should be able to do seven credits per year. Multiply that over four years and you'd have 28 credits. So do six classes per year with a study hall with it over four years is 24 and 24 credits is the number of uh, you needed for graduation. So we uh, suggest that in between six and seven each year. Dual credit classes, we do offer dual credit through Carl Sandburg. This is These are classes that you can um, get high school and college credit for. 
However, they are strictly college classes. So they do start your transcript and grade point average at that point. Um, you have to pass a placement exam in order to get enrolled into the class. Um, and Carl Sandberg gives a half tuition top scholarship for dual credit students, um, up to six credits per semester. So, which equates to two classes. So you can take one to two classes for 50% off um, each semester that you would like. Um, we also have the Charge Ahead program, which is allows our students to graduate high school and graduate with their associate's degree from Carl Sandburg um, at the same time. So uh, it takes a lot of dedication and we could go more into that, but that would start junior year. If you're interested, we can talk about that. We do have uh, several extracurricular activities, you know, on top of athletics and read through there, the different uh, opportunities that we have. Um, well, those, those will be showcased, you know, at, at open house when we do that uh, right at the start of school. And we meet during the day on those for the most part. And you just, if you're interested, you just have to sign up and go, go to meeting. So um, any more information on that, if you have questions, please, uh, please let me know. Band obviously, you know, is an extracurricular, but it is within the school day as well. So you would need to sign up for band if you're interested. I uh, just want to touch again on the uh, getting the physical and, and insurance and medical info taken care of. It needs to be uh, in, in terms of athletics, uh, everything, all these, these things need to be on file at the high school office before the first day of practice. So that can be um, a little troublesome or, or difficult to do because practices for fall sports start before the start of school. So you just need to stay in communication with the coach and the office and make sure you get all these things taken care of. Um, the forms again are in your packet um, and you need to submit those with your immunizations um, before this first day of school anyway. So the, uh, the physical for entering high school does count as your sports physical as well for freshman year. So you don't have to get two forms filled out. After this year, though, you have to get a, a sports physical every every year until you finish high school. All right, I'm just asked that you like and follow uh, on Facebook, uh, Alina West High School, the school counselor page. Um, we do do also have an IW Chargers school Facebook account, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, those those links can be found on our website. Uh, we also have presentations for this uh, freshman orientation from the CEO program, Mr. Short talks a little bit, and, and Mr. G will talk about uh, some of his programs. If you have any questions or need individual assistance, um, you can go to our website or you can email myself or Mr. Short. Um, our typical uh, email address is always last name, dot first name at aligniwest.org. So anybody um, at aligniwest that you're wanting to email, just use that format. Um, I thank you for um, attending and checking out some information on Alina West. Um, we look forward to having you here in the fall. And the next time that I see you, I will be going to your schools here um, in a week or so to register you for your classes. So make sure that you fill out those, those papers and bring them with you on the day that I will be there. After that, we'll have a, a loop night in the summer along with, um, we'll also have an open house for all the students in the high school, but the loop night will be for freshmen only. And it'll give you a chance to kind of go through your schedule. We invite parents to attend as well. We'll, we'll have a little bit of an informational session for them. But other than that, um, I will see you here soon. I'll be to your school. And if you have questions, please contact me or bring them to the meeting when I see you. Um, good luck the rest of uh, your eighth grade year. I hope you finish out strong and uh, can't wait to see you next year.
I was drawn to the program at the very first page of their website when it said, think outside of the box. And so that was something that drew me in and a way to engage students in a different type of learning. We are hungry for young people with ambition and desire to grow Western Illinois. Uh, we, we have many flourishing businesses in our communities. What we're hungry for are the young people that want to stay here and help them grow. And so the CEO program is where they start to think about that. We had a lot of support materials the Midland Institute for Entrepreneurship so that we weren't out there blindly. We were able to really promote the program in a professional manner. In small communities, if we're going to thrive, we have to, it has to come from within. It has to be, uh, you know, we can't be waiting on someone to come in and bail us out. It really has to come from our own. And if we're gonna, you know, thrive going forward, it really needs to come from the younger generation. And, you know, who better than, than those high school kids uh, that, you know, maybe don't know what opportunities really are out there for them. Well, I guess first and foremost, my decision to study um, entrepreneurship uh, in college can be largely attributed to my, uh, my time in the CEO program. Um, even when I talk to professors, um, and I can share my experience at owning my own business, working on the team um, with our class business, uh, I can better connect to them in their lecture. Then when I took the CEO program, it kind of really opened my, opened my eyes to, to the world and like what there really was out there, especially the business community um, in our immediate area in Hancock County. Building relationships and networking with people. I've been able to build so many relationships with my professors or my advisors or even people on my floor because I've taken CEO and have learned how to do that. Through CEO, um, as we were taking business visits and having guest speakers come and speak to us, I had no idea how many businesses we had in Hancock County. We have so many businesses here that even if you pass every day, you don't know what's inside, you have no idea who runs them, you don't ever get to see that. Well, I knew that a lot of business existed in Hancock County. Um, I didn't necessarily know and really understand the full scale uh, of Hancock County business uh, and how those businesses are really thriving in our county. Um, and I didn't ever think, and I really, I would have never had, you know, this understanding or appreciation for um, businesses in Hancock County um, without the CEO experience. I, I would, it was never one that wanted to come back after college and come back to Hancock County. But after taking the class, um, I would definitely be open to the idea of starting a business, uh, a sm smaller business in Carthage or um, in the Hancock County community. The numbers haven't been huge in terms of the number of students, but if you ask anybody that's been in contact with those students from the you know the beginning of the, the year to the end, every single one of them will tell you the, the drastic changes they've seen in the kids, just in their confidence and their ability to uh, you know speak publicly or look someone in the eye or shake someone's hand. Not only does it give them eight college credits and high school credits as well, but most importantly, it opens those doors for the kids that they would normally never have opened for them. They meet businessmen and women all over the county and beyond. They learn those essential life skills, that firm handshake, that eye contact, that interpersonal skill that helps them be a young adult. The biggest impact that CEO has had on Hancock County 
um, really is just the development of our students. It is ex still exciting to me after five years to have the first day of class and then watch those students um, transform as they go through the program and um, have their own personal business at the trade show at the end of the year. There is nothing like um, imagining them on the first day nervous and scared and shy and watching them stand confidently with social st skills and leadership and um, interacting with the public and the, um, the community, owning their own business and um, taking responsibility for their actions and, and all of those things as they proudly stand at their trade show booths at the end of the year. Good morning, my name is Chris Greenalls, also known as Mr. G. I uh, work here at Atlanta West as the IT director. I'm also over involved in far too many other things. Um, but today, I wanna just go through some basic technology ideas with you guys as you approach freshman year next year. And then I'll also give a few run-throughs on some things that I'm involved with and some sponsorships that I work with. So um, anyway, on the front of technology, um, one, as you come into our district, you will have a PowerSchool account that will be given to you. Um, you will have a student account and a parent account. The parent account, we will give you information and then you will actually use your own email addresses to then create an account for yourself. A parent account has a little more access and some availability and visibility into some of the things that are going on uh, in, as in grades and finances and those kind of things. The student account has access into grades and some of the other things, but not quite as much. We also have an app through the PowerSchool that you can actually do this on your phone. Um, so there's a number of ways that you can get that information. We'll be sending either a letter or information to you directly, and that information will be there to, to give you access to that PowerSchool account. That will be something they will use the rest of their career here at Illini West to check grades and follow up on several different things and some of our online curricula. We also will be giving your student a cheat sheet as the year begins. That cheat sheet will have information um, about logins for Google, for our Windows network, for some of the computers we have here on the building premises. It will also give access to Office 365, which is the full Microsoft Office suite. Um, that is something that they will have access to here at home. They will also have access to it online. And even for some of the families, for, I'm sorry, all of the families, they will have access to that Microsoft Office at home. Um, that will last as long as they're here at high school so that they can have access to that and you can actually install that on your computer's home if you want to. They'll have login information for that. The cheat sheet will also have the login information for the student's power school on it. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, that will give a lot of information. Your students will also be given Chromebooks. They will be checked out individually to the students. Um, there are several different kinds of Chromebooks, some a little larger, some a little smaller. All of them will be in working condition. What we do ask is that you make sure that they have a charger that goes with it and that the charger stays with that laptop at all times. Um, they last usually about a day of, for a full charge, um, but chargers become the bigger issue. The way we work with Chromebooks right now is that if you break a screen or if something goes wrong with the Chromebook, you can bring it back in. Um, you have one that you will um, get for uh, free so that um, we make sure that you continue to work. However, if we see that there is a pattern and we have one or more that come in, what we will start doing is charging for those Chromebooks. At a minimum, that will be about a $200 charge. So we do ask that you take care of those Chromebooks. You'll be given a Chromebook with a bag that is from the school. You can use that for your other equipment if you choose, or books, or folders, or whatever you choose. But just remember, the tighter that bag is, the more likely the screens are going to start cracking a little bit. So we just ask that you take care of those Chromebooks. I also ask, and I, it's not been something we've done previously, but if you have headphones, please make sure your students have headphones of their own. Um, I know in some classes they'll use it even in the computers here on the site, um, but that way the headphones can connect with the Chromebooks, um, with the laptops, and we don't have to listen to everything they're listening to. The Chromebooks do have Bluetooth capability, although that I will want to work with um, your student to make sure that it works that way. So I would recommend getting um, earbuds um, that are pluggable. We do have uh, an audio jack on every Chromebook that we have in the building. But I think that would be something that would help alleviate some concerns um, throughout the year. 
I think that's about all I'm going to cover on the technology side at this point. There's several things that will probably come up as we go, but that's that's it for now. On the sponsorship side, I work. I also work extensively within the digital production and the live stream and um, the business side of things within our community here at Illini West. Uh, I will begin by talking about Horsehead Studios, which is our live streaming uh, YouTube channel. Um, there are also digital production classes that feed into that channel. And the idea being, we are trying to build the concept of how do you live stream well? What are some of the things and requirements, hardware wise, software wise? What are ways that we can do this um, effectively, but also cheaply? We're supported by a number of businesses within the community, which I hope you um, can see on those live streams and some of the advertising we do. And so we really are in, in the process of trying to connect with our community and connect with these kids um, to be able to do some digital production work. We have Horsehead Studios, which is more of an after school activity. Um, it's something that we do as a club more than we do as a formalized class. Our digital production class, once you turn to a sophomore, um, you can have the digital production class and that's where we work on Photoshop and Premiere and we actually do professional editing um, both within the photography world but also within the videography world. Um, we also then, of course, have the live stream capabilities within the building, um, along with a number of other digital production value that we do in those classes. I'm also involved with FBLA as a sponsor, and that's the Future Business Leaders of America. That is a sponsorship opportunity where kids actually can come in. They compete with other kids in a varying levels of testing um, that run the gamut of business um, from A to Z. And so they do testing, they can do presentations, they can do a lot of really amazing work. Um, as they proceed and progress and do better and better, they're able to go to state and compete at a state level. And then after that, if they do well at state, they actually have an opportunity to compete at a national level, which is uh, a lot of fun. And so we get to travel all over the country to visit those. Um, it's, it is something that we are continuing to try and grow and move forward with. Um, and we'd love to have your, your students be a part of that. Um, we also have an informal tech club. It is more for kids that are just interested in technology in general. Um, we don't meet too often because there's just so much that we can talk about. Um, we tend to run out of things and, and run out of time. Um, so that's something that I do want to grow over time, but this year has been a little less um, connected. Other than that, those are the main ones that I run through on a general basis. Um, most of the kids will have seen me or connect with me at some point um, in their career here at Illini West, um, whether it be with technology or some of the things we do. My apologies, I just remembered something else. I'm also a sponsor for Key Club, which is a philanthropic organization where we actually do community service projects. So um, this year we got to do the Sleep in Heavenly Peace bed build. Um, some of you might have seen that out in our um, front yard out here. Um, it's something we're going to do this spring as well. We also have a number of other projects, but it's all for philanthropic services. We're also connected then with the Junior Chamber of Commerce for that. Um, so we actually connect back with the community, um, the communities at large to try and connect back and, and give back to the community too. So um, that being said, uh, looking forward to having all of your kiddos here with us next year. I'm looking forward to meeting all of them and seeing the joy and awesomeness that they're going to bring to our community here at Illini West. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always address that with me. Um, I, my email is mrgmrg at IlliniWest.org. Uh, be glad to chat with you there. I can't wait to see you guys. Hoping you guys are coming in um, ready and prepared for an awesome new year next year. Thanks so much. Hi, so I just want to summarize the, um, the registration process. Um, I'll be coming around to the different junior high schools. I wanted to show a couple of examples of the uh, registration sheets here. Let's see. Pull it up. So um, all eighth graders will have a, a green sheet like this, uh, individualized uh, to them. So I just want to break down here the, uh, the course selections, especially the ones that are already typed out. Um, number two is the math uh, course. So um, getting, I just solicited some information from the, uh, the eighth grade math teachers. And these are their recommendations for each student. So, you know, your eighth grader will have their own green sheet with recommendations specific to them and some information on the reading test score results that they took. 
in the fall. So number two, for instance, is, is math. And we do either Algebra 1 or 1A. Again, the math um, handout is in the folder. And that one, whatever the teacher uh, recommended, is circled. So for this example, this student, um, they have been recommended for them to take Algebra 1A. And then we go down into the science where their science teacher recommended one or the other, uh, Biology 1 or the Life in General Science. And this student... Um, as you can see, it was recommended they take biology one. Now, if we go down to the reading information, um, we did do two tests that assess reading, and we'll take um, either one as, in terms of looking at the reading class. But in, able to, in order to test out of the reading class on this first one called the SRI, you need to have a 1010 or greater. And as you can see, this student had a 1030. And the PSAT would need to be greater than 390, and this student scored a 400. So um, there's no reading class required for them, and it's not written in on this green sheet. So wherever you see the blanks would be where they, you need to fill in, um, you know, your course requests that they could that they would like to take. Um, driver's Ed, everybody's is written on this right side, but please. Um, signify which semester um, your student will be turning 15 years of age in. Um, if they you know, do it in the first semester, then you would circle semester one driver's ed, and they'd be taking the class during the first semester. Uh, if they're 15 in the second semester, circle semester two. And if they're younger and won't be taking driver's ed or won't be um, 15 by May 30th, uh, of 2023, then you can just cross out driver's ed completely and that will move to sophomore year and it'll just need to be replaced by another course selection. So uh, I, hope I'm, I hope I'm clear on this. This is something that I will go over um, as a group with the students when I come visit the junior high schools. Um, I have another example here. This student uh, here, it was recommended they be in Algebra 1, so that's circled. The life in general science was circled, recommended. And then, then their reading scores down here, the SRI, they uh, scored a 995, which is below the benchmark. That's okay. We'll look at the next one, which is the PSAT, 370, still below the benchmark. So reading is inserted as a class for them. Uh, remember from the uh, reading handout, they will have a chance to test out again from the reading at the end of the first semester, or they could remain in it uh, the entire freshman year. But again, it's, it's beneficial, um, and it's just uh, a tell kids nothing to hang your head about. It'll just help you uh, build those skills. So uh, I just want to make sure I, I made that clear and, and everybody had an understanding. Again, I'll talk to the kids as a group. Um, you can always email me, call. Um, you know, put these classes down and, and we'll sign them up for freshman year. And if you have questions, let me know. Other than that, um, thanks again for, for watching and we will see you soon. Future Chargers, thank you for watching our online freshman orientation for 2022. I hope that as you watch, you gain some valuable information to get you started for next year and, and down the road as well. I know that Illini West is a great school, has a great staff, and has a lot to offer, and I know that you're going to do great things as a Charger. I'm proud to be your principal. I'm excited to start working with you and get to know you and see how successful you can be. If you have any questions, you can call me at the high school office at 217-357-2136, or you can email me at short.jim at IlliniWest.org. Everybody take care. Uh, enjoy the rest of the school year, and I'll see you in August.